Hey guys, today I am going to talk about the dirty secret that Alpha Investment does not want you to focus on. Now, I will say he has been honest. There's some people, which I'll get into a little later, who are a little bit less honest about their situations. But at least Alpha Investments, you can say, hey, he's been upfront about it in a previous video. Does he mention it in every video? No. A lot of the Timmies, they watch a video, maybe they didn't watch the older videos, which were, in my opinion, more honest about actually how he came to be. Uh, Alpha Investments, according to Reddit, and I believe this, I remember watching a video where he said he had government contracts, he had these restaurants. I don't remember the real estate part, but that could have been another video I didn't watch. But he also came from a family you know, it's speculated that came of money. Would that surprise me? No, because like you said, getting into the game of real estate, getting into, so some of Reddit's points, you know, if we assume that he has real estate, he has restaurants, he has government contracts, he's probably doing really well, magic or no magic. In fact, my opinion would be, given what I understand, is he would probably do better and make more, if the objective is to make the maximum money doing those things than doing his passion. So this isn't the story of some Timmy starting from zero in magic, working in magic, learning magic, and then making millions and millions and tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. No, this is the opposite. This is a guy, and this is what my friends and I also do. We all own a business. My friend who owns DNA Comics, he has a construction company the DNA comics doesn't make money for him. It loses money every year. There was one year it got extremely bloody and it's okay because he has another construction company. I'm okay breaking, I wanna break even, you know, I don't have a construction company. He has a legit construction company. I don't want to break even, I, I wanna break even, but I have a marketing agency that makes all the money. So when we have an employee or we have a freelancer and they come to a convention, they just sell some cards and stuff, that's actually an employee being paid on the time of the marketing agency. I justify it as training, you know, as sales tactics and so on, right? Promotion. So a lot of times you can cross over and many, and in fact, I'll be quite honest about you. Some of our bigger clients, I found them from having a game store. There are whales in a game store and it's really easy to identify the whale because you can go outside and there's a Lambo parked in your parking lot. And it's like, hmm, this Lambo is either for the strip club or for us, you know, like, you know. Oh, and he's coming into our store. Okay, cool, it's for us. So the dirty secret is no one makes a shit ton of money selling magic cards. No one makes a shit ton of money selling flipping sports cards. They all made the money before. We'll get to Mr. Uh, Wilson a little later. But we're gonna focus on Alpha Investments for this video and the next video. He was a made man before he started buying magic products with money he got from carnival bonds, from everything but magic. Remember, he didn't sell the good cards. So what he's selling you is the garbage, right? He keeps all the good cards and then he sells the garbage to break even on the good cards that he's buying that he doesn't sell. This is exactly my model too. Like you have to understand, I don't really sell cards. I have a store to buy cards in collections. And again, you know, my prices, you might be, what are your pri My prices are super public, you idiots. Like they're just the highest buy list you find. And if it's a good collection, I add a top. So like at the very minimal, it's a buy list. TCG player has an excellent buy list. You know, from what I've seen, it's either TCG player or Card Kingdom. So one of the two, maybe a combination of the two of like, you know, sealed box versus this, they have a pretty good buy list. I mean, if all these stores and TCG player are not gonna go offer you more money than I am. I mean, there you go. Like what, what do you want me to say? I offered higher than any other store in America on TCG player, which should be thousands and not tens of thousands of stores, right? So like, how can you say my deal is a bad deal when you know, it's the best deal that's openly and transparently and visibly out there. Again, sometimes your collection sucks and I just give you whatever the high buy list is and, and there's no premium. That's okay. I still let you mix and match and do, you know, 
whatever, you know, you want to mix and match four stores, as long as they're itemized, they're easier to understand it's from this store, and I can confirm the price. I'm good. So the big dirty secret is that he was wealthy before magic, he will be wealthy after magic, he does not need magic, he does not need meta zoo, he does not need these flesh and blood, he does not need investments in card games to be wealthy because he was wealthy before. He did not get any of his wealth because the wealth is tied up to these cards, right? Like it's one thing, like the one way I think about it is you don't actually make money or you know, lose money until you sell. So what he's doing is he's selling, he's making money and then he's using that money to buy alpha, beta, vintage collections and he's just putting it in a bank somewhere. Like he's not actually net positive until he sells those extremely valuable cards in terms of cash, right? That's capitalization. And I imagine he actually does not want to sell those cards because then he would have to pay taxes, right? Capital gains. So this is how the game works. A lot of times people won't tell you the truth about how the game works. The game works this way. Your game store can lose money as long as you have a profitable second business or primary business. Every person that owns a game store outside of Eden Games locally has a primary business that makes up, assuming a game store loses money, it's actually just a tax write-off for you. It's fun to have and it's cheap. So the way I look at it now is totally different. I don't expect my game store to make any money. I don't expect it because again, like Rudy's model for instance, if he sells all these cards, he pays taxes. Does Rudy look like an MFR who wants to pay taxes? Just look at him. All right, like he, the dude is probably not really into paying taxes. So why would he sell the cards at a profit, buy vintage cards, then sell the vintage cards at a 10x profit? He would just rather keep the card and not pay the taxes. This is how it is. This is how people accumulate huge collections. They sell the crap, they use the money they made from the crap, they buy the alpha, beta, vintage, you know, the Arabian, the, what, 100 sets of Arabian Nights he supposedly has. Then they put it in a safe. It's never taxed because there's no gains on it. Boom, done. But you can only play this game if you have other successful businesses. So not only did he come from money, he's still of money. Open Boosters, it's been told to me by Edwin, is a retired, incredibly wealthy individual. Edwin's like his best friend, I think. So like, if, you know, why would you lie to me? So these videos you watch of the Timmy, you know, the idea you could get wealthy from this is being pitched to you by people who did not get wealthy from doing the same thing. They were already wealthy. So, there you go. I mean, there's the uh, dirty secret behind most people. Like, same with me. I don't make money from magic or sports cards or any of this. I'm just hoping to effing break even. But if I don't break even, fine, I take a tax loss. Yeah, it's fine. As long as I have another company, well, we'll talk about this later. Um, as long as I, you know, my friend has a construction company, as long as that one makes money, and it does, I mean, obviously we're, you know, housing boom, right? For now then he doesn't care if he's, and then and the, every inventory, the promos, and, and the one thing that you understand is, my my effort God, like, you know, Brissy Rowe gives you a lot of promos. So there are a lot of benefits to own and having a store. A lot of people think that these store owners are just broke ass people. They're not. Like Hunter Pence owns Coral Sword. Hunter Pence is a very famous baseball player. I don't know if he's retired. I think, I assume he's retired now. He doesn't even live in Houston, I think. His wife is like a social media light, social light, I guess. Do you think they need the money? The guys made millions, if not tens of millions, and not close to a hundred million dollars from baseball contracts, right? He's a famous baseball player. He opens a game store, it's a tax write-off. You know, it doesn't, I mean, it's, it's so funny that people think that game stores just, <sighs> The, 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 this narrative that all oh, these broke people are running a game store might have been true maybe 10, 20 years ago, but it's not true today. Like people who are very successful have game stores 
or are selling online and they're losing money because they're buying more collections than they're selling and they're just holding. And if you don't sell the collection like a stock or a bond, there's no capital asset, capital taxes. So if you sell, let's say $100 of mod double, you make $100 from selling double masters. Then you spend that, let's say you make $800, let's say you make $500, I don't know what underground, is, $600, $600 from selling a case of double masters. You then buy a underground C as inventory. Boom, you're break even. And you might be like, oh, why is that important? That's important because you don't pay taxes. But you got a effing underground C for your company as part of your inventory. Now, when you sell the underground C, it will be profit. You know, it will be considered capital gains. If the underground C goes from 600 to 1,000, it's even more so. But if you never sell, like people don't understand, why doesn't Rudy sell? Why should he? I mean, this system is how pe rich people get art. This system is how rich people, like once you become wealthier, somebody will explain it to you, your financial advisor. I have one in Chase and he was telling me about this and I was like, oh. So he told me not to get worked up. My game store loses money. It doesn't really matter because as long as you know, you're making money and you're living the life you want and you have a successful business, um, and that's why a lot of these, you know, entrepreneurs and so on, they have multiple businesses and a successful business is going to, you know, break even for the bad ones. <laughs> Guys, 